it, it refers in that very first entry to continue Barbie photography and pick up new photos. What does that refer to, Barbie photography? Okay. She would have lots of, lots of Barbies. Barbie dolls? Yes. Brand, brand new one and antique ones delivered to her. She wanted to, then she would have you set them up with their outfits. Before you think of anything that is very odd about this, remember her collection of Jumeaux. Madame, Madame her Pierre, collection what? Of Jumeaux. Jumeaux. Her, her bisque dolls that okay. are worth fifty to a hundred thousand dollars, you know, each. Other people said this sounds ridiculous. You know, remember she never lost a dime on anything she owned. So she had to set them up and photograph them in situ in scenes in front of Barbie dolls and stuff. And she she liked to look at them. So at the photographs. Yes. And then she'd have us so these are Barbie dolls that she had purchased at auctions? Not at auctions. Or, and she had a lot of them sent from France. Okay. And when, when I, Let when me read it a second. Okay, sure. Yeah. When I, when I think of Barbie dolls, I think of the Barbie dolls that you'd buy at Toys R Us for your five-year-old daughter. Is that, is that what and you're talking forget, about? If you bought it in 1957, it'd be worth $6,000 now. And so a lot of the ones she wait, owned, wait, wait, wait. she bought in the 60s or 70s. Uh, you know? Okay, the Barbies that she, she loved them. They, they, but they were just the, the, yes. the typical Barbies that Not you... Not all. Please, stop interrupting okay. me. Slow yeah. down. The typical Barbies that you would buy at a toy store here in, in, in the United States, correct? Not exactly. Well, what were they? Well, she, used, she bought most of them from Onan Blue in, in Paris. So by the time they got here, they were worth $200. And... She liked to have them set up in a certain way, in certain poses, and she would have those dress and undress them in certain ways, have the furniture set up a certain way. And you bought all this stuff in the Darby mansion, the Barbie accessories, you're looking at five hundred dollars worth of stuff. Sure. And she wanted to see how these things were set up. And, and she would ask you to set them up at back at the apartment? Yes. And take photos. And take photos. And bring the photos to her. Yes. Uh, did you at times bring the Barbies and, and the doll houses to her at the hospital room? Not often. She, it, it got too con confined. It was too much to do. So she, we would set it up in the house. And Barbies, but then we would do it with the very, very expensive dolls, the Jumeaux, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, this is one of the things that she enjoyed. Did you ever suggest to her that because she enjoyed it so much, now, why don't we take a day trip from the hospital room back to the apartment just to enjoy the afternoon playing with these dolls herself? Yes, I did. And what did she say? She left. She just left? Yeah. I think, that, I think it would have been a very bad physically for her. Uh, okay. It just it sounds like, uh, I just don't like the, the refer, it's the inference that somehow that because she liked these Barbie dolls that there was something wrong. But if you could have spoken to her, you wouldn't think that. Um, go down further. It said uh, on September 9, proceed to 907 Fifth to search inventory for a Stacy Happy Meal set. What's the Stacy Happy Meal set? It's uh, Barbie's little sister. Uh, did, did you ever see her, by the way, uh, read cartoon books? Yes. What, what cartoon books did you see her read? She was like the Smurfs and things like that because she was learning to do animation. And she had super fast photography that before she went to the hospital, she had high speed photography that she was pretty good at. And she took quick pictures of the cartoons on television, and she was, you know, when you just thumb through them very quickly, you could see the animation move, move, and she was practicing. She was a world-class artist, by the way, that she could see that how the animation worked, and she was practicing on that. But, uh, so, but did you, see, so would she would read the, the comic books, the Smurf comic books? No. She had tapes of Oh, so you had played the, the Smurfs on TV? Is that correct? Yes. 
So would that be like a videotape, the old VCR type videotape? Yeah. And and you'd put it in and, and it'd be yes. up on the. So w would she put that in the v VCR? Would you put it in the VCR? How would oh, that? Oh no, that was before. That was before I was there. Oh, I, I'm I'm only interested in this period of time. In, in okay, again, I want to focus. Well, that's here. where there there's stacks and stacks of hundreds of them in the apartment. That's how somebody might ask about it. Oh, it's, oh, I see, I see. And she would because she would watch these cartoons. Yeah. Besides the Smurfs, what else did she watch? Well, she liked the Japanese anime. You know. The, the, she, Sailor Moon, that kind of thing. Yeah, but she was totally into uh, the uh, Tokugawa shogunate period of the 17th century, and that's where thousands and thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of, of this Beiji era Japanese stuff was. And she was totally into the same thing with them. Set, she had us set up all these Japanese kabuki theaters and such and take pictures of them, except they were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. It, it, it was her, she was fascinated, it was her hobby, you know. Like People don't understand, it's like, she owned these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dolls. But I mean, nobody complains about Jay Leno owning 350 automobiles or Demi Moore opening 1,000 dolls. She just loved these particular type of things. 